Three, two, one, boom. Thank you. Thanks for doing this, man. Really appreciate it. You're welcome. Very good to meet you. Nice, nice to meet you, too. And thanks for not lighting this place on fire. You're welcome. <laughs> I try to convince people to slow down, slow down AI, to regulate AI. I tried for years. You said that uh, artificial intelligence is the, the fundamental existential risk facing civilization. Did I get that close I enough? Think I, in, in my opinion, it is, it is the biggest risk that we face as a civilization is artificial intelligence. How should people think about artificial intelligence? Like if you're going to explain it to one of your younger uh, children, you would say artificial intelligence is what? Uh, it's just digital intelligence. And um, as the algorithms and the hardware improve, that digital intelligence will exceed biological intelligence by a substantial margin. It's obvious. When you say that we'll exceed human intelligence, at some point soon, the machine's going to be smart, not just smarter, like exponentially smarter than any of us. Ensuring that the advent of AI is good, or at least we try to make it good, seems like a smart move. But we're way behind on that. Yes, we're not paying attention. You feel like this is decades away or years away from being too late. If you have this fatalistic attitude, we're in a almost like a doomsday countdown. It's not necessarily a doomsday countdown. It's it's a... Out of control countdown? Out of control, yeah. People call it the singularity. It's a singularity. It's hard to predict. It's so once it's implemented, it's very difficult. Cause it, and it will be able to improve itself. Pro yes. That's where it gets spooky, right? The idea that it can do thousands of years of innovation very, very quickly. Yeah. And then we'll be just ridiculous. Ridiculous. We will be like this ridiculous, biological, shitting, pissing thing, trying to stop the gods. No, stop. We like we like living with a finite lifespan and, and watching, you know, Norman Rockwell paintings. It could be terrible, and it could be great. It's not clear. Right. But one thing is for sure, we will not control it. Do you think that it's likely that we will merge somehow or another with this sort of technology and it'll augment what we are now or do you think it will s replace us well that's the scenario the, the the merge scenario with ai is the one that seems like probably the best like for if, us yes like if you if you can't beat it join it so from a long-term existential standpoint that's like the purpose of Neuralink is to create a high bandwidth interface to the brain such that we can be symbiotic with AI. Because we have a bandwidth problem. You just can't communicate through your fingers. It's too slow. And where's Neuralink at right now? I think we'll have something interesting to announce in a few months. Probably, I think better than probably anyone thinks is possible. What's the idea behind it? Like, what are you trying to accomplish with it? Like, what would you like, best case scenario? I think best case scenario, we effectively merge with AI. AI serves as a tertiary cognition layer uh, where we've got the limbic system, um, kind of the you know, primitive brain, essentially. We've got the cortex. So you're, you're currently in a symbiotic relationship. Your, your cortex and limbic system are in a symbiotic relationship. And generally people like their cortex and they like their limbic system. I haven't met anyone who wants to delete their limbic system or delete their cortex. Everybody seems to like both. And the cortex is mostly in service to the limbic system. 
People may think that, that the thinking part of themselves is in charge, but it's mostly their limbic system that's in charge, and the cortex is trying to make the limbic system happy. That's what most of that computing power is oriented towards. How can I make the limbic system happy? That's what it's trying to do. Now, if, if we do have a third layer, which is the AI extension of yourself, that is also symbiotic. Um, and there's enough bandwidth between the cortex and the AI extension of yourself such that the AI doesn't de, de facto separate, then that could be a good outcome. That could be quite a positive outcome for the future. So instead of replacing us, it will radically change our capabilities. Yes, it will, it will enable anyone who wants to have superhuman cognition. Anyone who wants, in theory, that's the theory. And if that's the case, then, and let's say billions of people do it, then the outcome for humanity will be the sum of, of human will, the sum of billions of people's desire for the future. And but that, that billions could be of people with enhanced cognitive ability, radically yes. enhanced. Yes. But how much different than people today? Like if you, if you had to explain it to a, a person who didn't really know, understand what you were saying, like how much different are you talking about? When you say radically improved, like what do you mean? You know, it's kind of like how much smarter are you with a phone or computer than without? It's, you're vastly smarter, actually. You can answer any question pretty much instantly, any calculation, that your phone's memory is essentially perfect. Uh, you can remember flawlessly, your, your phone can remember videos, pictures, any, everything perfectly. Uh, that's the, that your phone is already an extension of you. You're already a cyborg. You don't even, well, most people don't realize they are already a cyborg. It, that phone is an extension of yourself. It's just that the communication rate between you and the cybernetic extension of yourself that is your phone and computer is slow. It's very slow. And, and that, that is like a tiny straw of, of, of information flow between your biological self and your digital self. And we need to make that tiny straw like a giant river, a huge, high bandwidth interface. It's an interface problem, data rate problem. I think we can hang on to human machine symbiosis through the long term. And then people may decide that they want to retain their biological self or not. Versus some sort of Ray Kurzweil scenario where they download themselves into a computer? You will be essentially snapshotted into a computer at any time. If your biological self dies, you could just probably just upload into a new unit. Literally. Pass that whiskey. <laughs> this, we're getting crazy over here. This is getting <laughs> ridiculous. Can Down the rabbit that? hole. Grab that sucker. Give me some of that. <laughs> this is too freaky. <laughs> See, if I've I was been thinking about this for a long time, by the way. I believe you have. If I was talking to one of my... Cheers, by the way. Cheers. Yeah, this is great whiskey. This could be a huge problem for society. What are the scenarios that scare you most? Humanity really is not evolved to think of existential threats in general. We're evolved to think about things that are very close to us, near term, to, to be upset with other humans, and, and not, not to really to think about things that could destroy humanity as a whole. Um, but then in recent decades, recent just really in the last century, we had n nuclear bombs, which are, could potentially destroy civilization, obviously. Uh, we have AI, which could destroy civilization. Uh, we have global warming, which could destroy civilization, or, or at least severely disrupt uh, civilization. Um, Excuse me, how could AI mm -hmm. destroy civilization? You know, it would be something in the same way that 
humans destroyed the habitat of primates. I mean, it, it, it wouldn't necessarily be destroyed, but we might be relegated to a small corner of the world. When Homo sapiens became much smarter than other primates, it pushed all the other ones into small habitats. They're just in the way.